Ah, <sighs> another sunrise as we get ever closer to the release day of Splatoon 3. Now before I stream again, I need to clear my friend list so I can accept new peeps that show up. So let's spend the morning deleting people one by one and pulling up my Google spreadsheet of when I played with people. A few moments later. Ah, there we go. All set for when I can get back in business. And would you look at that? A new world record! It only took me an hour this time. Sometimes I can take two if I need to, you know, engage in other human activities. Private battles, the thing that allows you to unwind with friends after dealing with the rank system that still torments almost half the community to this day. From solo queue making players sweat profusely whenever they see a minus sign on their map test or a crack on their phone now. To Turf War seemingly pairing people together blindfolded, private battles have been one of the shining ways for players who still stick to Splatoon 2 to play together in a more controlled ecosystem. I love playing these maps. So many cool things to learn that you wouldn't normally be in tunnel vision in a ranked match or what have you. But these more relaxed matches allow me to chill, get better at the game, and learn a thing or two about these stages. Please, please! I just want to live! I've never felt so threatened by recycled plastic in my life! However, there's also many things that we don't have access to in them that I feel can not only make them more enjoyable, but increase the interest of the game in the long term. Without further ado, let's get into them, shall we? Typically, I never say the words private battles without saying room code soon after. I'll give them Splatoon 1 because it was the first in the series, and no one's first try is their best, especially that first try is Nintendo doing anything that involves a router and a modem, and Splatoon 2 was the rushed little brother that needed to push the switch. But now that we're on to Splatoon 3, room codes definitely need to be a thing, and in addition to that, our kicker ban button too. So that way, if people end up double dipping in lobbies or coming in when they're not supposed to, they don't have to be begged to leave. In addition to that, I see no reason whatsoever why I can only have two spectators in the lobby at one time. If I want to spank somebody in a 1v1 but don't have a capture card to broadcast it, I'd love to have people into the lobby and I can just spectate all of them. Plus if life calls and more than two people need to leave and do something, I should be able to plan accordingly without needing to sit out myself, running around the map blindly. Oh shoot, I've got three people that need to do something. This person needs to walk their dog, this person needs to go eat, and this person needs to use the bathroom. Well, should I continue wearing diapers? I don't know. Okay, so there's my obligatory matchmaking session in this video out the way. But the next thing I wanted to talk about, and one of the more main reasons why I made this whole video, is this right here. I want a lot of the barriers for private battles to be torn down and allow for more creativity among players. As someone who has conducted over 30 separate sessions of private battles with viewers where we slightly break the mechanics of the game and create pseudo modes where we say, stop the opponent from getting to our base with only snipers, enable a key person person to survive while their doppelgangers confuse their opponents and just recently trapped one team in a pit while the other threw bombs at them for three minutes. It can get increasingly frustrating trying to come up with new ideas using the limited tools that we have. Some of these ideas are actually out here playing mental twister, trying to make sure their ideas work, and I feel like I'm the assistant of an English teacher trying to read through all of them. Once we've gotten full power over the matchmaking, having all spectators in place and the teams decided, then we need creativity with how we play. The first way could be allowing us to toggle on the ability to choose any weapon that we want in PBs, whether we have them or not, or if we're feeling risky, randomize the weapons. This is already a thing in Samurai, so I see no need why it couldn't be a thing in Private Battles 2, so people don't need random weapon generators. Heck, if the devs are too lazy to add any new UI for this setting, I got them covered. I'll even make in Splatoon 2, shoot. Okay, let's get started here. Let's go ahead and copy this icon right here. We're gonna need that pattern a little bit later. Uh. This is so nice, so phenomenal. Okay, here's my creation. PayPal me later, Nogami. The next thing I was thinking was to allow players to toggle on when they get subs and specials. In some of the amiibo challenges in Splatoon and in the Aqua expansion in Splatoon 2, you had the ability to complete whole levels with just your special. So this could be a thing in private battles as well. This won't work as well for all of the specials, but it'd be hilarious having the crab tank only match or a zip caster only match, and some crazy stuff could be conceived with that. Inversely, you could just turn subs and specials off if you want players to be forced to use their main weapon. Following that, giving players the ability to choose their abilities can also be a great perk for those who want to mess around with all swim speed or main saber or even this beautiful specimen right here. Just imagine a reality where we could do this. It would not only be useful for those who want to mess around with the mechanics, but also those who like visually labbing how much each ability affects your character without needing to take too long to get your abilities through a merch-like process with perfect rolls or pures. Now about here is where things have been implemented in the games in the past end, and where things get a bit wackier. Changing the physics of the game. This is an idea that I had taken from another one of my top five Switch games being Smash Ultimate. 
In Ultimate, there is a local mode called Special Smash, where you can make characters huge, make them out of metal, or make them breathe fire the whole match. Oh, did you think I was going to say we should move this over to Splatoon? Oh, no, no, no. We're playing with Inklings and Octolings, not Cthulhu. In Splatoon 3's case, we should do some wacky things like mess with the weights of the weapon, or mess with the rates of special charge or depletion. If you really want to be crazy, we can even mess with the speeds or the gravities of the characters to do even dumber stuff on the maps. Like, has this ever been you on Sturgeon Shipyard? Eh. Man, I want to make this jump so badly, but I can't! How dare this map be so well designed that I can't spawn camp this way! Well, now you don't have to worry. If we can mess with the gravity slightly, then that could be possible. I don't want to jump like 20,000 feet in the sky like the hackers do, but just little things that still keep the game playable, but spice things up. A couple other ideas I thought of were the usual life system where you can only get splatted so many times during that match and then you're out for the round. And of course, Battle Royale, baby! Eight different ink colors, everybody for themselves, come on! The main idea from this point is that there should be more customization about how matches should play to make it where you aren't doing turf war in the same four ranked modes, a nighttime setting, and then just duking it out like normal. As much as I'm sure Clan Blitz on Schellendorf Institute is adored by a huge crowd of 12 people, being able to mess with certain settings for the fun of it could lead to more fun being sparked for everyone. So now that we've figured out how to improve them before and during the match, that leaves the need for a reward after the match. As someone who plays private battles more than anything at this point now, and someone who has every weapon in the game already, I'd love it if I was rewarded things like I am in regular battles. Gold and XP to then bring weapons I couldn't bring into battle before or into battle with randoms, and hopefully other rewards that we'll see in Splatoon 3. The bank account is getting pretty stacked right now, and it will be again in the Splatland, so I might as well get some other rewards. A mixture of being able to freely matchmake to your heart's content, mixed with having some other wacky settings that you can turn on in between matches, and finished off with having some small rewards to make you feel like you actually earned something in those private bouts other than bragging rights can not only keep players playing the game because the limitless combinations of stuff to do in private battles like you see in games like Ultimate or Minecraft, but if this stuff is publicized then it will influence even more people to buy the game and do the much needed thing of differentiating it from Splatoon 2. Another little sector is Splatoon 3 refined. When the game releases we'll see how much these things are changed. Oh and speaking of release dates, be careful what leaks you read online because half of them end up being fake and the other half are interesting. If this game actually ends up being released on July 15th, I will do absolutely nothing but be bitter, but at the same time happy it's finally releasing. What do you want to change in Splatoon 3's private battle system? Let me know in the comments, and remember to leave a like and subscribe to Star 16 for more content on Splatoon 2 and other things gaming. I'll see you all next time.